All right, y'all, listen, it's been a minute. Bro, the way I hold a piece of steel. <laughs> I gotta talk about this, man. Being steel, man. Oh, my jock. The way I hold a piece of steel. Oh, my jock. This is my shit. I've been playing the hell out of this. I go wild like a simple full loan. Bro, set up rhymes. It's a gun pow, boom. Hit the baseline crank. From being now ranked I'm hard like an erection. Phrases might get too tough to break down in sections. Phrases might get too tough to break down in sections. <laughs> Come on, man. It's like one of the hardest Red Man verses ever. Straight up. To me. I, I think he just... And this is like the second verse ever, in a way, right? In terms of debuting on something... Um, you know, commercial, right? Like a like actual project. Can you imagine that shit? You're listening to this in 92 or whatever, and you hear this guy, Red Man, and he's like, phrases might get too tough to break down in sections. You're like, what the fuck? I, I would have stopped rapping. If I was a rapper, I would have been scared. You know? This is my shit. Black to make a killer. Similar to a black stab. A rest of my brain is insane. If a booty did not be framed by an MC, who can't be the R.E.D. Fuck with me, you can slap up the cap. Easy to treat. This is my shit. Ask me, me, me. Don't tell me I'm electrified. Similar to Rail 3. Brother say I'm electrifying. Similar to Rail 3. <laughs> Come on, that's brilliant. <laughs> I know I'm smashing roast. I know I, I brag and roast. He's from here to the West Coast. Miracle with no abracadabra. He's a smash like crackers. Saltine in townhouse. Oh, but fuck with the roundhouse. What? Flip semi bowl. A bowl ain't bowl. I'm down with the squad. No more than four to five rubbish. The more you seen got slumming. There's some fury. Been birdie. Let's hear it from the jury. What? Come on. Come on, man. Anyway, let's talk hip hop, man. That I need to hear that every now and then because it just makes me love rap. I fall out of rap. I love with rap, modern day rap, because it's so garbage. So anyway, it's been a long time. The shit left you without some little videos to check through. Um, what's been going on? You know, I've been back from the motherland now for um, a couple of weeks, just getting back into the swing of things with work. And um, honestly, there hasn't been much hip hop news. I know obviously there's always stupid shit, but nothing really compelling that has made me go, you know, I gotta make a video about this. Um, unfortunately, um, and I think that that's just the nature of the game. It's dead, it's stale, um, niggas is doing stale things, releasing stale music, and you know, I complain and complain, but again, if you're from my era and before, you already know what it is, you know, and I want to like the new stuff, I right? obviously do, you know me, you know I'm current when it comes to new rap, but this stuff right here, man, the Drake and, and Kendrick thing just put a... Like, made me go, uh, this rap shit's corny. It's falling the fuck off. Now, um, since it's been a while since I've chatted, let's just cover some of the, like, I guess, depressing things or whatever, the major things that occurred, right? Let's start with this um, latest Eminem record, um, Houdini. So, I haven't heard all of Houdini. I refuse to listen to all of Houdini. You already know how I feel about Eminem. If you don't know, check out my previous videos, okay? Eminem is somebody that I don't give a fuck about, okay? He always charts very well with his white casual audience, and that's okay, that's all right. But it's not something that I would ever check. Now, I heard a little bit of it, and um, I was like, oh, this is a retread of uh, Without Me. That's okay. I mean, I've always said that this is one of his best songs. Um, again, I'm never at home being like, yo, let me listen to Without Me. Never. Anytime I hear this anywhere, it's because someone, if if I happen to be at some, I don't know, if, if I happen to be around a lot of white people, <laughs> the, you know, on campus or whatever, th this was back in the day. Again, I haven't heard the song in forever, but I do think it's one of his better songs. You know, the, and it is funny. There's little lines about it, you know, fuck you, Debbie, and all that shit. And Moby, you can get stop out, you know. Um, no, nobody listens to techno. <laughs> that was a shot. I like that. It was There's some funny shit in there. But again, it's Eminem. 
it's always going to be goofy. There'll be, you know, uh, shots of pop stars. So he took a shot at Megan Thee Stallion. You know, if, uh, I wonder if I wanted to feed, you know, would I have a shot with Megan or something of that um, effect, which um, obviously got Twitter because people are always looking for attention. So they're, you know, the mob is always want something to feed on, right? Um, I mean, I'm not offended by it necessarily. I mean, I think that Eminem will always go after easy targets. You'll always go after what's pop. Megan Thee Stallion is pop. I mean, I don't know if y'all realize, she makes music for white people. So like, now, <laughs> so I was gonna say, yo, Tochi, what, you know, how do you know this? Um, she's doing a Hot and Top Venus thing. If you don't know about Hot and Top Venus, look it up. Um, essentially, um, this was like a, it was like during slavery era times, you know, the body was paraded around black, maybe from South Africa area. Um, that was very popular in, uh, you know, slavery era times. Um, see, white audiences, white audiences have always sexualized black women and black people in general. Um, but in particular, well, black women, of course. So Megan is just playing into that. I mean, that's her audience. Her audience base mostly want to see her just, you know, um, twerking and like she has no songs. Okay. Now, my point is that it's not surprising that she would be on Eminem's radar and like I said if she's on Megan's radar Eminem's radar then Eminem is gonna fire a shot because it's very easy it's something that his uh, white male audience will appreciate because some of them probably listen to Megan Thee Stallion I gotta be honest with you um, probably pretty heavy too so that's my opinion on that um, the song like I said I couldn't get through it just like I can't get through most Eminem songs all right you guys mind so, so we rewind you guys are asking me about the summary on this Kendrick and Drake thing um <laughs> you know I'm reminded about that alien versus predator um tagline that I always thought was really brilliant from back then um no matter wins uh, no matter who wins we all lose <laughs> something to that effect and I think hip-hop lost in that battle for sure uh I don't think anyone won that battle um, really, you know, um, yeah, so let me do a recap here, take my notes, but, um, you know, Drake basically said, you know, I smashed your hoes first, um, Yannis is jealous of me and you need me for hits. Now, the latter two statements are 100% facts. Um, and then Kendrick's thing was, you know, um, Drake is a pedo, oh, I'm dick police. <laughs> um, I don't listen to Nicks who are dick police, okay? Um, I think it's very weird that uh, the Drake haters, who are basically bigger fans, they're meat, meat emojis, right? Who care about where Drake stick, you know, sticks his tool. I could care less. I could care less who he's sleeping with, whether the girl is underage, and I don't care. I mean, I gotta be honest with you. If Drake is, uh, in fact, you know, sleeping with underage women and breaking the law, he should go to jail for it. I think that's pretty obvious. But does that affect me as a listener of Drake's music or in general? No, I don't care. I'm not invested in that. The police should be invested in that. <laughs> not the dick police though, because the dick police are weirdos. <laughs> but the actual police. Okay, I think some of y'all have <laughs> some of y'all have your priorities a little confused. Um, Azalea Banks actually said some funny shit about this because she did cover how, um, you know, basically she was like, Kendrick stands, roll around with the, what is it, uh, SDE, <laughs> small dick energy or whatever, and they're constantly obsessed with who Drake's sleeping with and what's Drake's, you know, what are the outcomes of him sleeping with and whose kids might he have and secret kids and like his parents, it's weirdo shit. It's, it's, it is really weird. And all because the dude is Canadian, huh? All because he's six, six, six. <laughs> but I mean, look, listen, man, it is what it is. Shout out to Drizzy, okay? Um, and shout out to OVO. <laughs> People could be like, yo, told you, you Drake stand. You know, of course, you're going to ride for him. He's from Toronto. <laughs> Not realizing that I was never a Drake fan like that. Um, and in fact, I was one of the first people to say that I didn't like his music back when he came out like way way back but drake did get better and that's just the whole point he actually showed and proved and he had to because people were hating nobody's hating on kendrick people are dick riding kendrick right there's so much jealousy <laughs> so you know at the end of the day 
Kendrick isn't put under the fire to make better shit. And that's why his stuff is so weak to me. Yeah. yeah. Facts. Let's listen to Ghost on this one. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. You killed. <laughs> Right? Meaning those who are on. Or those who are not. Meaning those who are on, except in this case, Drake is literally the only thing that's on, right? In the grand scheme of things. And all the rest of the crabs um, beneath, like Kendrick and the anti Drakes, are all hating. Uh, again, it's it's mediocre, right? Now, let's talk about the real thing. And speaking of meter emoji, y'all should already know about this record. <laughs> All right, um, Diddy. Well, I will say this. Um, when I was living in New York, um, I remember talking to an older cat who was from Brooklyn. Um, so he was, he would be older than Diddy, but kind of like in that area, maybe. No, he would be older than Diddy because this gentleman at the time was, I think, nearing like 60 or so. But the point is that um, he was around for hip hop, right? Very much so. And he was, um, in fact, um, he knows a fair amount of these rappers. I mean, again, like if you are a brother who's in tune with the music scene, you're in Brooklyn, that's ground zero. In the 70s and 80s, like it's not hard for you to know who's doing it, right? Especially if you're an adult, right? Or near an adult, you've got your own car, probably that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're in the mix. So I'm not going to say this guy's name, but I do remember, um, he knows a lot of these rappers, right? Um, but he, he's not in the music business. He went a different route. But he certainly grew up, and he was even like, he, he, he knew Wesley Snipes and Denzel Washington and blah, blah. If you ever watch this video, my man, you know who I'm, You know who you are. Um, but again, because all these people hung out in Brooklyn in like the 80s, right? Like when they were nobodies, right? Um, so the point is this. I remember um, we we're having a conversation. How I met him was even a whole nother thing. <laughs> That's a whole other interesting story. But um, I'm talking to him and he was like, look, man, hip hop is gay as fuck. So he was telling, you know, we had this conversation like five years ago. He's like, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I expected it to be the usual because, you know, there's always these rumors about how gay hip hop is and, you know, all these things suck dick and blah, blah. But he was like, no, you don't understand. Like, it's really, really serious. Like, a lot of these guys are, in fact, like, low-key homosexual. They're trading favors to um, get funding to do their videos and to do their projects. And I said, what? Six, 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 okay, so if that is, in fact, the state of the game, that you have rappers who, or a fair amount of these rappers that we worship, who are in fact um, gay or bisexual, pretending to not be, um, then what's the remedy, right? I guess we gotta do, <laughs> we gotta take the church. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, um, no, church is not the answer. But um, listen, um, I, in the grand scheme of things, obviously don't care about someone's sexuality, never have. Um, I've, I've always said this, if I were gay, I would personally, like, I, I'm, but I'm that kind of person where I don't hide who I am. I understand why the gay community has had to go through what they've gone through because people are hating out here for real, for real. So I do support them. I consider myself an ally. Because again, at the end of the day, I don't think you should be persecuted for who you sleep with. If, if something is consensual, who gives a shit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not my concern. You know what I mean? More ladies for me, I guess, right? So, anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, I have been hearing these, like, rumors, at least from him. And he's somebody that I would say is fairly connected, you know, knows quite a bit about the business. So... Now, fast forward three, four, five years later, we're starting to hear about Diddy being this and blah, blah. And I wish you'd also say that when I was in New York, um, I remember going to, um, in Brooklyn, because I was living in Brooklyn, I went to the, like the source put on like a special event for Big, um, like, and it was like almost like a, like a block party, right? I think I might've talked about this a long time ago while I was uh, in New York. But the point is, and I met Lil C's there and I met a few bad boy people there because I live like literally 10 minute walk away from where Big 
grew up. Like Fulton Ave, like that's like a, from where I was living in New York, that's like a 10, less than 10 minute walk. So the point is this, I remember talking to somebody who worked at Bad Boy, again, I'm not gonna say who, but someone who worked at Bad Boy for a very long time. And um, he was basically telling me, he's like, look man, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that happened. I don't even know how we got onto this topic. You know, sometimes, you know, I'm just a certain way people open up to me or whatever. But he was like, look, there's a lot of stuff that has happened that Diddy is going to have to answer for. And I was like, huh? <laughs> um, and um, at first, you know, the, the, the dude was mostly talking more about the liquor stuff because uh, he felt more like the... Um, the way that Diddy was selling alcoholism and, and liquor to the community, the black community was poisoning us, which is true. Um, it's something that we don't, again, you know, if you're in hip hop long enough, certain things become obvious, you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, Diddy's not the only person obviously to do this, but it is unfortunate how hip hop sells poison to the youth. We, we know this, it's like very obvious, right? Um, and so his criticism was more along those lines of what Diddy was doing with Ciroc and and just sort of, you know, again, coming from the hood where people are dealing with substance abuse issues, right? Um, among poverty and other things, right? So it's, it doesn't help at all. In fact, it makes things worse if all you're doing is selling this lifestyle of getting drunk and wasted. Drink champs, right? Again, you know, not hard to figure out. But um, this, this brother was, was saying that uh, and that Diddy will have to answer for that. And a, and a bunch of other things. And he didn't go into those other things. Um, so again, you know, these are conversations that have been circling around, I'm sure, and especially among those who have really been in the business. Um, I'm an outsider, but um, maybe this is kind of a reckoning that uh, was a long time coming. As for my opinion on Diddy overall, look, man, I don't know Diddy. Um, I love his dancing in the videos. I think he's got a very sharp ear, obviously. Um, I think he's a talented brother. And, um, you know, I think he's con you know, contributed quite a bit to hip hop. You could see he's also sort of destroyed in his own way. That's fair. But um, I do think that in general, the stuff that he's contributed in terms of like the music quality of hip hop, I think has been great. Um, you know, again, content wise, you know, if I put my kufi on, <laughs> I could say that, uh, you know, all that stuff with Big and, and Mace was all baller, spend, you know, spending money, which just poisoned hip-hop ultimately and made hip-hop uh, fall the fuck off. But when I think about it, it was inevitable. You know, like when you have an art form that is that powerful and is that threatening to the white audience in particular, that challenges people, you have to understand hip-hop was really some dangerous shit back in the day. You know what I mean? Like, I remember talking to somebody who was who grew up here, and they were saying, like, when Wu-Tang came out, right, and was getting really popular with the young black kids, and kids was drawing the W logos in Toronto, like, police were coming to that shit because they thought it was some new cult that they couldn't understand what it was about, right? Um, you have to understand that hip-hop, it's now that Wu-Tang's accepted, and everybody's like, I love Wu-Tang and stuff like that, but that's not how it always was, right? Like... Usually black folk are on the cutting edge of music and when they're on the cutting edge of music, that's when they get the most hate with their art form. I mean, it is what it is. We've, we've been dealing with this for centuries probably at least. Um, so my point is this, at the end of the day, I think that it was inevitable for hip hop to become pop and to cross over because when you're doing something that's so cutting edge and threatens the audience, eventually people catch on and they want to be part of something cool but it's kind of like a an interesting as they're catching on you're also watering it down to fit them a little bit so that you can meet now my issue with hip-hop is that once you've got the attention of the elites of the white folks of those the non-black folk um the black folk in the suburbs once you got the attention of people right what did you do with that attention and so far it looks like we did absolutely nothing with it in fact we regressed with it we just said, now that people are listening to us, oh, it's just about turn up and hoes and, you know, and asses and, and drinking money, right? And drugs and guns, right? Who does that help, really? You know what I'm saying? And so people went, oh, okay. And that's the end of that. What should have happened is now that you have the attention of the mainstream, that's when you start to 
make sure you hold on to the, the ownership of this art form and then you can bring back out the really smart, positive or you know intellectually engaging rappers. Keep it dangerous. Always have that person and that artist or artist in the cut that are really doing something powerful to so that you can continue to speak for the black America, the down, downtrodden black America that needs it. But unfortunately hip hop didn't do any of that. So well it is what it is and that's where we find ourselves. Now um with Diddy, I would say that, again, I don't look into the personal lives of artists. It's not something I care about in the grand scheme of things. It's only interesting to me when it affects the music, for me personally. So if Diddy, for example, um, let's say grew up in an abusive household, and that's why when he makes songs, his songs are degrading women or something like that. Then yes, I mean, that is an interesting tidbit because it tells me something artistically about how he processes his art. But in terms of how many people he sleeps with, who he sleeps with, how he gets to end up sleeping with them, I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't. I am not a celeb chaser. I could care less. You know what I'm saying? To me, uh, these are artists. I look at their craft and it's very easy for me to separate art and artists, especially since art is collaborative at its very nature. So ultimately, even in music, which is really like, you could say a smaller team of people, there is still more than one person, right? Like Mob Deep are not just Havoc and Prodigy. Mob Deep and Havoc, or I should say Pro Havoc and Prodigy, are a collection of other people. Whether it be Loud Records, their, their management, their stylists, um, producers that might work for them. That's all, that all makes Mob Deep. So if Havoc does some fuck shit, and again, I'm not saying that Havoc would, but you know, shout out to Havoc, he seems like a cool cat. But my point is, I don't care about Havoc's personal life. I just don't, okay? I can still appreciate the music. I can still appreciate the genius of what he and the team put out, right? Um, while looking past his personal life because ultimately that's his personal life. And if there are crimes committed, he should go to jail, right? I mean, this is very easy for me to understand that. I do think that um, throwing Diddy under the bus Seeing all the people, like, whether it be, like, the Roger Bonds who are doing interviews talking about, well, you know, I, I, see was doing, I saw Diddy doing all this dirt. Then why didn't you do nothing? Why didn't you do nothing, man? You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. You know what I mean? That, that's coward shit to me in the grand scheme of things. And, look, this is my opinion. I could be wrong, but, you know... Let, you know, I would love to see the other side say, oh, it's not cowardice. To me, it's cowardice. Because if you see someone doing something wrong, you don't speak up about it. I mean, and you're involved, right? I mean, you're, you're right there, right? And you saw all this for years and years and years and years. So when it benefited you, you were cool with it and you kept quiet. And you might have even participated. But now that you're suddenly out of the picture, now you have a conscience and you want to flex the morality card. Get the fuck out of here. I don't like people to do that. I think though those are some of the most dangerous people in the world, honestly, right? Um, that that sort of morality, victimhood chic thing is just not my cup of tea at all. And that goes to Cassie as well, because the truth of the matter is, I never thought Cassie was all that talented. I mean, I gotta be honest, when Cassie was out in her day, I, don't, I can't even remember the name of a song that Cassie ever did. You know, she looked all right, cool, that's fine. But, like, well, who was she really, you know? I mean, she was just a girl along for the ride. And I'm sorry. I'm not really one of those people that says, oh, um, because Diddy slapped you a couple of times and you are a saint. I don't buy that shit. I think a lot of the times when you're looking at some of these abusive relationships, it takes two to tango. And a lot of these girls know exactly what they're dealing with, right? They're along for the ride and it fits their ego when it's, when it's popping. But when it's not working after a while, then all of a sudden, like, the guy is evil fuck out of here. Again, I'm not condoning abuse, okay, before some idiot runs with this. Well, I mean, people will run with whatever they want to run with. I don't, like, I've never in my life, I didn't grow up with my father abusing my mother. I didn't grow up with that shit. I am not into that. You know what I'm saying? So my, the blame obviously falls mostly with Diddy in terms of violence and all that stuff. But what I am saying is that, again, People have to be respond, take responsibility for their own actions and be culpable for things, right? And to when you when people create this monster and say, oh, it's just like, you know, he was the only person, he was the he was the representation of evil in this. I'm like, hmm, 
I mean, there's a lot of enablers here. How come the enablers never talk about what they're enabling and how they contribute to that, right? And even some of the people who are involved, who are so-called victims, a lot of times they're abusive too. I mean, look, listen, man, I'm, I'm a man of a certain age. I've come across people where they they be older, relatives, acquaintances. When I see some of these abusive relationships, it goes both ways. Of course, again, I don't believe a man should ever hit a woman. I don't respect that shit on any level. But at the same time, some of these women who are playing victim are abusive themselves. It's just that they don't have the power, to, the physical power to really, you know, pull it off. So they find other ways. If, they, if they're not already trying to hit things anyway. <laughs> so, look, my whole point is this. Ultimately, Diddy, the artist, Diddy the man. I don't really care about Diddy the man. I love Diddy the exec dancer getting all up in the video talking all that hot shit, right? <laughs> this is the Diddy I like. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many yells is that, right? <laughs> That's the Diddy I like. The impassioned, you know, sort of mogul business guy who can see, like, you know, he's he's got a new artist and, and he knows this artist has just created some crazy and he's exciting and he's like, you know, trying to amp up the song. That's the Diddy I like. And like I said, man, I'm going to be like Diddy, like, if, if, if any of y'all invite me to your music videos and shit, I'm going to be all up in the videos dancing and shit. I love to dance, you know what I'm saying? I like to bring engagement and fun to stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I fuck with Diddy, man. I fuck with Diddy. Let's look at this shit. The name. Harlem <laughs> <laughs> <Call> Shaking. <laughs> Motherfucking Diddy. Deputy. <laughs> Yo, this shit is crazy, man. My favorite part of this whole shit... Motherfucking death. The deputy! Look at this, man. He killed this. <laughs> I'm here! <laughs> no, what's my favorite part? Thanks. Oh. Bad boy. There's a part where he's like, um. Let me see if I can find it. Oh. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> Get to these bitches. <laughs> That's hip hop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not going to keep me down, you, right? I'm happy to be here. I'm still happy to be alive. Even though y'all been hating on me in my kind this whole entire time for centuries, I'm still alive. And I'm happy. I'm smiling. I'm looking good. Got it. Okay? That's hip hop. All right? So, again, shout out to Diddy, the artistic Diddy. That's what I respect. Um, but unfortunately, you know, it seems that he was in fact a rotten person or he has been doing rotten behavior. I don't respect that at all. And, um, you get what's coming to you. You know what I mean? Lastly, before I sign out, Kendrick needs to make one and all of these. He never will though, but you already know. My shit. Peace and love. Thanks for checking me out as always. <laughs>